Warriors. In ancient times, we were responsible for patrolling and defending all of Natland. So Ulch Khan's still managing to sow discord, even after all these years. If you want to resolve a conflict... Here's Chaska. Sometimes you need a third-party facilitator. Flying on her gun. Place, I'll bet the easiest person to find is... Ooh, new area. His spirit has gotten lost and can't find its way back to his body. Or I just want to someone, and Granny won't let me. Five hundred years later, mystery surfaced again. Capitano. I worry that we risk repeating the mystery. What's this big ruin scene? area? Right, they keep showing it. It's like a mountain. As long as the soul is involved, I should be able to help. That looks like a boss. Maku Kenki. Wait, what the hell? Why is it the seahorse? Wait, what? Okay. She's dropping on the Fortnite map. Holy fuck. Before the final moment truly arrives. What the hell is going on? Oh my god. That was a lot to take in. Okay, that was a lot to take in, I'm not gonna lie. Um I saw a bird, a dragon, Chaska flying in. As if she's trying to land on the Fortnite map. And Capitano. And explosions. <laughs> That's what I saw. <laughs> and I saw a weird purple boss. But Chaska's flying looks kind of interesting. I wouldn't say it's like the most gobsmack thing i'm like oh my god the best mobility it definitely looks like the biggest mo mo mobility power creep to wanderer but um yeah um it doesn't look bad this new area oh we have the uh localization team again from 5.1 from the local team and i'm kai okay whoa a cuckoo soar want to join us Hey, don't be shy. Come out and say hello. Why I look like a flamingo, bro? I'm not sure what that meant, but it was adorable. Drop kick it. She approves of your compliment. Hey, I didn't know you could speak Saurian. <laughs> oh, I can't. I like I can that we're getting two new tribes, though, that are, like, language. decently Whoa. big. Are all Kukusors as friendly as this one? Adult Kukusors are usually very proud creatures, but there are always exceptions. Well, since our Kukusors... It looks like a pink parrot. You're us, not wrong. just the place to start. The Flower Feather Clan. All right, let's do it. Kukusors live among the Flower Feather Clan. The Flower Feather Clan. High above the okay. Mountains. This is a tribe of warriors, and most of their people can command That's the That's an interesting of the design skies. around the wire. It was the Flower Feather Clan's ancient duty to patrol and safeguard the entire region of Natland. As so they're warriors, forces, okay. Their job was to detect threats. They keep showing that ruin in the background. What is it? Though the circumstances are different now, the tribe never forgot its origins. They still hold trials to assemble the fastest teams in the tribe. <laughs> the trials test the pilot skill and teamwork with the Cuckoo Source. I told you, bro. They're practicing so to land on the Fortnite the island, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cuckoo Source are the proudest out of all the stories. I see that guy they over, bro. That they're they're the looks cool. The Cuckoo Source can consume flotation. Oh, wow. We can actually fly now. Or perform a horizontal roll in midair. Okay. Holding the sprint button allows them to enter an accelerated glide state after a horizontal roll. In addition, okay. they can even use phlogiston wind tunnels to quickly cover Okay, phlogiston wind tunnels, okay. cool. So I'm assuming that Kukosaurs are really hard to tame. Yeah, that's true. You need to prove yourself in some worthwhile feat, like demonstrating exceptional archery skill during flight. That's the oh, only God, way to not become archery. a true Kukosaur rider. Wow, that's so strict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me about it. But okay, now that we've got a glimpse of the Flower Feather Clan, it's time for a quiz. What? Already? 
<laughs> yep. I hope you're prepared. Every Why do we have a quiz? A unique way of communicating with their Saurian companions. The members of the Flower Feather Clan use a special item to summon their Kukusaurs. What is that item? A horn. Um, uh, uh, a basket filled with their favorite foods? Here's a hint. We just saw the answer in the previous video. Oh, I, I, I remember now. A uh, horn. Ding, ding, ding. Kukusaurs live far from the tribe and from each other. So in order to summon them, the tribe's people use whistles and horns to produce I was going to say, like, you would so use a horn to get their Kukusaurs. attention. Maybe they sound a little unapproachable compared to other Saurians, but don't worry, travelers. If you get into a tough situation, then Chaska, the Flower Feather Clan's expert oh, Chaska, okay. can help mediate the conflict. Knitch mentioned that her method of mediation is silencing both parties. Is that true? <laughs> Obviously, I know there's like well, information that you know from leaks and stuff, but like cases. genuinely, I want Most to know time, what she does. Because they can obviously Everyone change her kit. She's capable of, so people usually find a way to set aside their differences when she shows up. Oh, so she doesn't just handle conflicts between humans and Saurians. She keeps the peace between people, too. Exactly. Chaska was corrupted by abyssal power as a child. Oh. So she has a strong compulsion to fight, but she knows how to rein it in. Right. I heard that she was abandoned as a baby. Mm. It seems like oh, she's she was abandoned? So yeah, but luckily for her, the Kukusaurs took her in and raised her as one of their own. In addition to hunting Bro, and why they be giving so many Genji characters terrible and horrible and fucking backstories, bro? Chaska's in your party. Defeating monsters will restore Phlogiston to your party. While she's in the Night Soul's blessing state, Chaska can ride and control her gun like a Kukusaur. Okay. The Soul Sniper doesn't just increase her movement speed and resistance to interruption. It also allows her to get a better angle on her enemies. All right. Wow, that mid-air perspective is so cool. It seems so liberating. Yeah, and Chaska's fierce when she's in the zone. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't crazy about Chaska, but like her bow actually doesn't look that bad. I was shitting on it when it initially got previewed, but I can presume this stance right now is it ascended past level 70. It actually doesn't look that bad. Um... Her flying state in the Night Soul Blessing looks unique. It's like a bit weird seeing someone hover on a gun. I'm not going to lie. But um, I think it's kind of nice that she's got interruption resistance. Obviously, it's not going to be the best because they're going to want you to summon for other characters who will give her better shielding capabilities. Um, and the special aiming mode is kind of cool. I wouldn't say it's enough to make me glaze, but it, it it's kind of cool. In the Night Soul's Blessing state, Chaska's normal attacks deal animo damage to enemies in front of her. Unleashing a charged attack in this state will cause Chaska to enter a special aiming mode. This allows her to lock on to a set number okay. of enemies within range and fire up to six Shadow Hunt shells, which deal an So this bullet, like, mechanic looks interesting but my concern is um is this gonna be a constellation thing that's gonna make her strong or is it gonna make her kind of shitty because like they're making her a transform based on what this is showing here they're making her a transformative dps where she uses other elements and converts it into bullets right but Wanderer does something similar, but instead of it making it use other elements, it's using the elements to boost his own damage, if that makes sense. If he has Pyro, it boosts his attack. If it has Electro, it boosts this. If it has Hydro, it boosts the time he's in the air. You know, like, it, it, it's a bit of a different mechanic. It's a bit of a different way, but I understand that she's also from Natlan, so her Night Soul state is, like, unique as well. I'm intrigued. Animo damage upon impact. In addition, for every pyro, hydro, cryo, or electro character in your party, 
one of Chaska's Shadow Hunt shells will undergo an elemental conversion to deal the corresponding type of elemental damage. Whoa, no way! So Chaska can directly deal other types of elemental damage. Okay, so she's not AoE. Right. I thought she would be AoE. She's single target because the marks the are hitting the opponents. So she's not AoE. I thought the damage would like be AoE because if it was AoE, then that would be very, very strong. Because that means you could trigger multiple reactions like you would trigger Hyper Bloom and Overburn, all that type of stuff. But because it's single target, that changes her damage dramatically. Especially when it comes to fighting elite bosses to wild bosses to weekly bosses. It makes it really different. Um, but the Cryo, Hydro, Electro, and Pyro, it's nice, but I need to know more. Characters in her party. Mm. And since she's an animal character, she can swirl them at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah, I know, right? Her elemental burst has a similar function, too. Chaska fires a gale splitting soul seeker shell during her burst, which deals animo damage. The attack then splits into six soul seeker shells, which can right. attack nearby enemies. These shells can. I'm really. really <laughs> okay, I'm not trying to break down this trailer way too much, but like. I'm really concerned for that ultimate ability because the way it looks is very, very similar to Mulani's ultimate. It looks very similar to Mulani's nuke. Very similar. It's like, it looks like Mulani's nuke, but the extra arrows or the bullets, the like multicolored ones, are like Tainari's like extra triggers. That the the way how I just saw that like go, like the way how I just saw this spin around, gave me PTSD of Hyper Bloom when it doesn't hit the fucking trigger. The attack then splits into six Soul Seeker shells, which continue to attack nearby. D can you see how it's spinning around and then it actually hits? Oh no! These like that that really. Uh, I'm sorry that that like scares me because like based on what they're saying and Nemo damage isn't going to be her specialty it's the infused elements that are going to do the damage so if you're going to have the big hit of the Nemo and then the you know the triggers from the extra bullets if they don't hit your damage is literally going to fall off and I don't know how well the targeting is. Shells can also undergo elemental conversions. That's so cool. Why do I gotta show us her thighs, bro? Like, come on. I know it's her animation, but Jesus. The warriors from the Flower Feather Clan are formidable. Okay, W. we should also shed some. Okay, we can get our tribe leveled up for the reputation. That's what the tribe costs people who fail the flight trials, right? They're the challengers who fail. Milani's old targeting is still bad. Exactly. But the name doesn't indicate she looks like that a witch on a broom. Are weak or I mean, I can see the idea the where you'd think that. Has its own definition of strength. There's a tacit understanding that the wingless are supposed to be protected until they can fly by themselves. But that assumption is challenged in Tribal Chronicles Tlalocan. Someone will dare to ask, what if you didn't need a cuckoo sword to fly? If you could change the rules, then maybe there wouldn't be any wingless to begin with. Now, whether that's the right mm. path is for us to discover. Chaska will also be there to help us find the answer. So, be sure to check out Chaska's Tribal Chronicle if you're interested in what happens. Is there anything else that you can tell us? Hmm. Ah, remember how I mentioned that Chaska was raised by cuckoo swords? Yeah, tell us about it. <laughs> Her Saurian mother will make an appearance in this quest. Even though she's joined human society, Chaska wait, what? Still to visit her Saurian mother on occasion. This is literally fucking. When she Bro, this is literally Cloud Retainer with Shenha all over again, but the difference is the fucking animal can't transform into a human. Our Feather Clan is also the setting. Oh, we're getting another Archon quest. I thought it was going to be a world quest. 
Okay, that surprised me. Interlude our conquest. All fires fuel the fl Okay. Conquest chapter five interlude. They did they All fires they, they fuel said the flame. Ah They said the R conquest of the main story was one five point oh, five point one and five point three. But they didn't mention the interlude. Okay, I like that. Thank you. That's cool. That's cool. Go past the towering walls, you eventually arrive at the settlement of the... Oh, Mystery that's really pretty. The oh, wow. Unique glowing landscape oh, I really like that design. Further, then you might encounter the tribe's wild, I really like that design. Many shamans who can communicate with spirits. Oh, wow. I even heard that the witch doctors who... Oh! Cleanse your spirit. Oh. They Plus, could. The art is really incredible. In fact, they actually could. This one. Can you figure it out, travelers? Hmm. I you wasn't crazy about the Masters well, of Nightwind, worry, but that tribe Loki looks tough. Wait, what? Ectomasaurs are known for their wisdom. They can use their unique sight to detect things that can't be seen through normal mains. Whoa. Okay. Right. Oh, so like. Ectomasaurs are especially skilled at detecting ley lines and phlogiston. They can absorb power from phlogiston objects oh. to enhance their ability. A saurian with elemental sight, basically. Higher, move faster, or even obtain surprising rewards. Ectomasaurs can also extract information from graffiti art to create special objects. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. I bet that'll come in handy for solving puzzles. Definitely, especially in Tribal Chronicles Mictland, which will become available in version 5.2. The first two acts feature a lot of intriguing puzzles. So be sure to check them out, travelers. Some of okay, them so we've got two tribes we can unlock. And others can be solved on your own. I noticed that Ictomisaurs can perform fast-paced jumps when they have enough phlogiston, and it looks like so much fun. Do we know anyone who can use that ability? Besides the new Saurian, I mean. Yes, Auroran can do it too. Like the Ictomisaurs, Auroran has the ability to rise in He can air. shoot me there? He has a keen sense of perception. While charging an aimed shot, Auroran will enter the spirit speaker state, allowing him to extract power from Netlands. Okay, why the fuck is this motherfucker not a five star? Wait, wait, look, I just clocked that. Bro has his own Saurian that's based off his own abilities. He can shoot mid air, and he's got all these, like, gimmicks for Natlan. And he's a four star? Wait, why is he a four star? He doesn't need to depend on the Night Soul's blessing state to gain oh? Night Soul points, and he can maintain the Night Soul's blessing state even while he's off field. Oh, uh, that does sound different That's from the other cool. characters. So, how do his abilities work? Let me start by explaining how Auroran gains Night Soul energy points. efficiency. This can happen in multiple ways. For example, Auroran can gain Night Soul points when one of his party members triggers a Night Soul burst. Easy as fuck. He can also gain them when other party members deal Hydro or Electro attacks to enemies after Auroran unleashes his elemental skill. Oh, that uh, sounds like he Hydro and Electro characters. <laughs> yep. And in combat, when enemies take damage from Electro charged reactions or other party members deal Night Soul aligned damage, Auroran can consume Night Soul points to enter the Night Soul's blessing state and trigger the hypersense effect. Oh my god. Oh, I see. So you need to pair him with the right characters if you want him to gain Night Soul points, enter the Night Soul's blessing state, and trigger the effect. Exactly. Though I should mention that Auroran doesn't need to be on the field to trigger the hypersense effect. Wait, he can trigger it even while he's off field? That sounds really useful. Totally. His elemental burst provides a convenient way to deal damage and support your party. Auroran performs an ancient reach roll with his burst to summon a supersonic oculus, which taunts nearby enemies to draw them in. Motherfucker is literally electrocharged AoE official. I I can't believe <laughs> They actually made, they made a support specifically for electrocharged. He is an electrocharged AOE official that works with teammates who are not from Natlan. Wow. 
they've actually buffed Electra Charge a little bit. I wonder, but I wonder what his C6 does. It's called Ochkanatlan. Oh, I think we caught a glimpse of this ancient city when we were looking at the Flower Feather Clan. It's really beautiful from mm. far away, but those clouds look kind of ominous. It looks completely. Bro, what abandoned. is this is place? Dangerous? Yes. This is a restricted area in that land due to its severe abyssal contamination, and it seems uninhabited. Over the years, many adventurers have come here in search oh, it's of a sword. treasure or to slay the dragon. Uh, slay a dragon? None of them have ever returned. The Flowerfeather clan often sends riders to patrol the area and to prevent people from getting too close. Wait, did you say slay the dragon? Yeah. I know we introduced some adorable Saurians earlier, but this creature is what? really terrifying. Oh. It occupies this ancient city and guards it fiercely. If it detects an intruder, then it will attack without hesitation. Okay, what? That's pretty concerning. It's easy to take human Saurian coexistence for granted these days, but it actually took generations of effort to reach this point. This relationship wasn't nearly so harmonious in the ancient past. Okay. Travelers will need to explore Ochkanat land to uncover the reason behind this dragon's rampage. Of course, travelers won't have to do this alone. Here, take a look. Oh, what's that? This is a very important companion. That is really cool. Ochkanatland. They're His actually showing dragons for, power, for well, being the nation of okay, uh, war and having dragons as like you know, the si the civilization before up. humans. Hey, I like that. Some of the abyssal monsters here can distort their appearance oh, to mimic powerful enemies. It's a tree. Monsters, such as the Tenebris, Wait, what? Why is it the Drake? Stronger enemies. Uh huh. It looks like these monsters take the form of plants outside of combat. Yep, that's true. The abyss has corroded net. Oh my god. Lines, allowing these monsters to read the memories inside of them and mimic creatures from Tevat. How do we defeat them? Oh Travel my god. To use elemental attacks to break the enemy's protective void wards. Doing so allows wow. them to take damage and causes them to enter a brief state of confusion. Night soul aligned elemental attacks are especially effective against these wards. Wow, the abyss has gotten so advanced. It's scary to think about how much harder these fights will get if these abyssal monsters Tenny Burrus. Yeah. Okay, that Bro was a lot of information Bro to take in at once. Pay but before we take our first break, we still have a short announcement. Papella. It's really short, I promise. First up. What the fuck is that name? It looks interesting. In interesting boss. Just like in version 5.1. Manifest the form of other enemies. 400 extra primo gems. 400 primo gems. Okay. All the way through version 5.3. It's now time to introduce the event wishes. In the first half of version 5.3. Oh 5 shit. Oh. Travelers can look forward okay. to wishes from Chaska and Lenny. So we have Chaska and Lenny. On the first half with Auron, I'm not gonna lie, I thought they were gonna put Auron on the second half. They usually do that with the new four star, but knowing that Chaska and Auron on the same banner, I'm not gonna lie, that's a W. But I'm also wondering who the other four stars are gonna be. Part of me also thinks that I spoke to Kiki about this, we were talking about this. Lynette might be on the Lenny banner because she's only ever been on Lenny's banner since. But who would the other four star be? Auroron will also receive a drop rate boost. And in the second half of. Oh. Okay. Um. This banner is either going to be a massive skip for a lot of people or a massive summon. And I'm saying this now, the reason why it's going to either be a massive skip is because one, people don't need Zhongli because we don't necessarily need shielders. We already have healers and sub DPS that heal in the game and enough sustain from other characters that do we really need a shield? But the shield could help with Chaska, but the problem is... The shield won't help Chaska with her reactions because she can't utilize Geo. Now, Novalette, on the other hand, 
that is a very, very stingy move. Because if you're trying to get Noviolet, say you got him C0, R0, you don't have his weapon. You're going to have to try and get Noviolet's weapon without losing the 50-50 to the fucking weapon that Zhongli has, that black spear. That would be painful. That weapon is ass. It is dog shit. Um, damn. So we have the strongest DPS in the game versus one of the strongest shields. I'm not going to lie. Seeing where Noviolet and Zhongli is, it's going to look like a skip unless you need a DPS, like a strong fucking DPS that you can build. Novula is your go-to, but I'm going to be dead ass honest. This is bait. The, the Zhongli and Novula banners, unless the four stars are ridiculously peak, this is bait because right after 5.2, we have Mavuika in 5.3. I, I, I personally think having Zhongli or Novula is bait. Just hit use recommended oh settings God. and you're set. The recommended set lock plans will even update automatically oh, based you. on popular in-game configurations. Of course, if you have your own ideas Ooh. in mind, then you can always do Why? Oh my god. Dude, 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 you don't understand. Genshin is adding everything but artifact loader. <laughs> they are adding everything for artifact loadouts, but they haven't added the artifact loadout. <laughs> this is literally perfect for artifact loadouts and for, for certain artifacts that you're trying to farm for a specific character. Oh, I want to build a certain artifact set for a certain character. I'm going to lock these specific substats for this specific set. Okay, awesome. Now let me lock that entire artifact set for that one character and let me interchange it. Oh my god, people will glaze your game. Please, you have so many optimizations for artifact loadouts. Just add it. This is lit bro, I'm not this is like this is like when you're getting to the climb just to the climax of getting to the final answer of the actual problem and they're all they are almost there. They are almost there. There. That should so be Xbox gets a free that glider. The end of okay, that's cool. Program. Is there anything that you want to say before? Because we, we go got next? one for PlayStation. Yes. I'm really looking forward to all the new characters. Chaska and her weapons seem really incredible. I'd love to see how her travel chronicle unfolds because she has such an amazing personality. And Aurora seems like a very layered character. The storytelling is definitely going to shine. What about you, Gabe? Yeah, I'm just so excited for players to experience more of the Natland storyline, and we have so much to explore this time. I mean, two new tribes and a new area as well. And one thing I've always loved about Genshin Impact is how it's multi-platform. Like, I'm always logging in on different devices depending on where I am, so it's just exciting to see another platform become available for everyone. Yeah. And, um, yeah, on that note... I hope you have fun with the new version, Travel. All right, W's. Bye. Bye.